Sunday Fun 2018, we often like to stop by Aerodrome because, you know, there's always something new, and once again, we've got something new. But we've got something new here that's especially new because it's not something that Robert Basley created. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking with Blake and Sandy Thomas. You are the folks who built this. So you, so you know everything about it, right? Well, uh, I wish I could say I knew everything, but Robert Bozzi did a great job helping us build the airplane. Oh, great. Okay. He so did, tell me a little bit about how that worked. It's a great kit. Uh, you actually, we did builder's assist, so we decided on what airplane we wanted, uh, which was an airplane that we wanted, some military World War I airplane, and something that we, that we as Americans had during World War I. This is actually a soft width. Snyder, which is a British airplane, but we bought it from the British. We, the American we military. American military. Okay. Thank you. Bought it because you the... weren't around then. I'm guessing. No, I wasn't. Okay. I you wasn't don't around. look old enough for that. So. This is uh, this is yeah, a long time ago, uh, over a hundred years ago. <laughs> so, this airplane uh, was uh, not. This is a replica of it, but it was bought uh, and used in our U.S. Navy uh, as a Navy, Navy airplane. Okay. Uh huh. And this, so it was used in our U.S. Navy. So these are the markings that were on that airplane. So we created a replica of the original airplane that our U.S. Navy had during World War One. That was this airplane. Now I understand that you and Sandy, you said with Robert's help, but you and Sandy are the ones who actually put this aircraft together. Is that correct? That's correct. Uh, what we did is uh, we decided on the airplane and then built this airplane, and it took a. Uh, a little less than uh, 700 hours. Actually, my wife will give the direct figure of 688 hours. Is that right? Good for you for being <laughs> accurate about it. But you know, I have to say that doesn't sound like a lot of hours for this. Um, that it looks like it took more than that. So, what was the magic there in having this not be a 3,000-hour kit or something? Well, it was our second one. Go ahead and take the microphone, Sandy, and do that for okay, me again. Okay, this is our second airplane that we built, the uh, aerodrome airplane. From aerodrome. From aerodrome. Okay, the first so you kind of had to drill a little bit then. We had the drill down. We uh, we did the Newport 28 that was here last year. So we ah, built that with Robert okay. first. That was a single seat fighter, which meant I couldn't get in it because I didn't finish my license flying. Okay. So the other reason we decided on this airplane was because it's a two seater. I peeked inside and I saw it's got a wide joystick and I, I couldn't really see until I got up there a little bit and looked and went, hey, this is a two seater. So. Okay. And it's got two throttles too, and it's got uh, everything's on one side's on the other side, so we can both we can both take her up and fly her. Well, so. I want some more detail, but let's back up a little bit okay. and say. So the second aerodrome. So tell me a little bit how you came across aerodrome. I mean, I know what you said you were after, but how did you come across aerodrome, and how's it been working with Robert? Well, Blake will tell you that he has wanted to build World War One airplanes from the time he was a uh, second lieutenant in the military. He That's always right. wanted to build one, That's and he true. wanted to build fighters originally because he flew fighters in the Air Force. Okay. Uh, and we saw the movie Flyboys. And uh, in Flyboys, he, you know, most people get up at the end of a movie and walk out. He's sitting there going through who was the grip, Read who was the scene single. guy. <laughs> and it finally got down to Aerodrome Airplanes, Holden, Missouri. And we walked right out and he called Robert and said, we want to come visit you. <laughs> and so we went out there to his little place and just had a great time. I mean, you'll, you'll never find a better man than, than Robert Bosley. He's just a fantastic guy. He showed us everything he had and just took us under his wing and said, I'm ready to go whenever you're ready to go. And that was the end of that. We Beautiful. Built the first one and then built the second one and I think they're thinking about a third but I don't know what it would be. <laughs> <laughs> well good thing you stuck around for the movie there then to get all the rest yeah, of it and the ultimately the, the information you needed. Yep. That's right. So where did you go to work with Robert then? You did it at his facility mm -hmm. then? Yeah, it's in Holden, Missouri, okay. and we actually did what we call the Builder Assist Program, uh -huh. and that's where he teaches you his technique on how to build the aircraft, and, and then you go ahead and build parts of the aircraft initially, and you then can take those skills and continue to finish the aircraft afterwards, and it's called Builder's Assist. Now. 700 hours, you didn't do that in one weekend, so did you move in with Robert, or how did you handle the part about, how'd you get to 700 hours in? All at his place, right? Yes, we actually okay. did it at his place. You could actually take yours home if you wanted to, or you could do it at his place, but we'd come and visit for, you know, three or four days at a time, and actually one period I came for three weeks. I had three weeks vacation from my job, okay. and I spent three weeks working like 12 hours a day on the airplane. <laughs> so we you're got kinda, a lot done. You're kind of glad to go back to work, huh? It was nice Before to go you back to work. Kick back and relax a little nice, bit. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> I'm kidding. Your 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 employer doesn't need to know that. Yeah, but we're right. just having a little oh, fun we're retired, here. Retired, retired now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. So when did this project happen then? 
What uh, year? 2011 is when we started it, but we finished it in 2012. Well, I'm telling you, it is, it's a beautiful thing, and you know, I'm a pilot, so first thing I go look at is a cockpit. Sure. Because that's what I know how to do. I'm not so good about putting things together like you folks are, but I looked inside there and went, wow, this is kind of cool, but I got to ask you right away, because there's one instrument, I'll call it an instrument, on the left side of the panel, it looks like sort of a weird flashlight. What's that? <laughs> that's actually the compass. That's the uh, compass. That's okay. actually the compass. It looks and like it's got a switch on it or yeah, something. Yeah, and that's actually what happened is that was the original compasses that they used, but when they needed light, they had to put like a little battery flashlight underneath it to shine ah, up through the so compass. So that's why it looks a little like a flashlight. Yeah, because they didn't have electrical systems back then. So sure. they actually used a flashlight battery type of system to light up the compass. Now I know anybody under about, I don't know, 25 or 30 is going, compass? Yeah. What, what, what would you even do with a compass? Why, did you, why didn't you just use your GPS? Well, come on <laughs> folks, uh, it's a little before GPS. But. A little before. Yeah. So, have you flown the aircraft? Yes, uh, it's got actually about 50 hours oh, on it okay. right now. So. Have you both flown the aircraft? Yeah. So Sandy, take I the microphone about... and tell me a little bit about your experience in flying this airplane well, that you and your husband built. I only had 15 minutes, that was it. And, uh, well, how were the 15 minutes? Well, the 15 minutes was, was great. Now, the, this was about, uh, what, when we built it in 2012, we were about 25 pounds lighter, both of us. So Airplanes the, the, and people tend to gain weight over time. Yeah, I've they always yeah. get you put on a little weight. So it's a little tight in the cockpit right now. We both need to, to go on diets and quit eating the, uh, the egg breakfast cup that they do over here. But uh, it was fabulous. It, uh, now, we don't have a windshield up there either. I don't know if you noticed that. So it's a little breezy. Yeah, so it's kind of breezy in there. Breezy, but, you know, so, I'm an old ultralight guy. So oh, me, okay. you know, right. space in your face, that's a good thing to me, so. Uh, it, it, it flies great. I mean, it's it's a little heavy uh, on the controls because it's, you know, it's got a lot of area up there that you're, yeah. you're dealing with, but uh, it was fabulous. I mean, any any open cockpit you can get in and fly is just fantastic. I so guess so. It's and it's, it's beautifully done yep, inside. It looks like it. it'd just be fun to sit in and make airplane noises, much less go fly. That'd <laughs> we, be fun. We do that, too, in the hangar. We'll <laughs> that's close good, the that's good. we got noises. <laughs> so let's, uh, uh, Blake, tell me a little bit about power plant on the aircraft. What? What engine have you used on it? Okay, the engine that we ended up selecting was a Lycoming O320 because oh, okay. of its great history of reliability. Um, there are other producing engines. how much power? It produces 150 horsepower. 150, okay. The original engine that went in this airplane was a Gnome 100 horsepower engine, and as you well know, that engine, if we could actually find one, would be an over 100 year old engine. Yeah, wow. And they didn't run very good then, so we wanted something that would actually keep the aircraft airborne instead of uh, you know landing at unprepared fields all the time. But the Lycoming does a great job, and it's uh, very reliable and performs very well on the aircraft. It's one of those things, if you look at the aircraft, it's got a lot of drag on it. So sure, even yeah. if. I mean, wire drag, yeah, all kinds of uh, form drag. And I'm convinced that no matter how much horsepower you put on it, the performance would be about the same, except it might <laughs> climb faster, but the speeds would be about the same just because there's an immense amount of drag on it. So the old 100 horsepower engine that might quit on you goes just about as fast as the 150 horsepower yeah, engine yeah, that's modern yeah, and new. Yeah. Now, so it looks like an old airplane, and that, that's the yeah. whole point here, but in fact this is all new stuff you've got on it, of yeah, course. Yeah, all, all, the, all the internal guts of the airplane are modern materials and modern building techniques so there's a an additional level of safety that's built into the aircraft that the original aircraft didn't have so even though it's a world war one aircraft it looks like it it flies about the same speeds performs about the same it's a lot safer aircraft than they were in world war one so, so tell me a little bit about it how does an aircraft like this fly most people myself included have no experience with an airplane like this Tell me a little bit, give me uh, the give me the two minute speech on how it is to fly, the handling characteristics, take off, stuff like that. Well, you know, it's very interesting. If you were an experienced pilot in a Cub or a Champ, which are two tail dragger aircraft, uh, tail wheel aircraft, uh, there's a lot of similarities. The aircraft flies very close to it. The only difference is, this is a 1913 control system, so the controls are heavier and not near as nimble as a Cub or a Champ, but it lands and takes off about the same. You'd be also surprised, the 150 horsepower engine, uh, it does a good job jumping off the ground. I can get off the ground and, you know, three or four hundred feet. Is that right? Yes, I can well, what just is jump the, off what the What is ground. the gross weight of the airplane? The gross, Let's put it in perspective gross here. weight is, uh, meets uh, uh, LSA criteria. Of, okay. It's actually 1,319 Pounds. Is that right? It, it, I guess just because it's physically sort of large, but it looks like it weighs more than that. So 
150 horsepower on a, on a 1,320 pound airplane, or, or what the number you just said, yeah. uh, that's going to make it perform quite well, I'm it, guessing. It does, it does pretty well. What kind you've of got climb a lot rate of do you see? Normally it's around 1,200 foot a minute, and guess what? <laughs> wow. 1,200 foot a minute is what the original climb rate was in this airplane with 100 horsepower. Is but that you've right? got a lot of drag on the airplane. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. So it's about the same as the original engine, but even though it's more horsepower now. Can I climb higher and faster? Yeah, the original airplane could only go to 7,500 feet. This one's been up to 8,500 feet with uh, no okay. problems at all. So. Okay. Yeah. And uh, when Sandy goes and flies with you, do you do some instructional things? Or, you know, how does that work between husband and wife? Well, it's very difficult, <laughs> as you well know. You knew where I was going with that, didn't you? <laughs> uh, I, have been, I have instructed her a few times in airplanes, and things didn't go very well. So I don't, I don't try and instruct her too much in an airplane. She's a pretty good pilot. She's, uh, you know, solo the, the uh, Luscombe and oh, okay. also uh, the Cessna 150. So she's done a good job in those airplanes. Great, great, great. Do you look forward to flying this solo? Oh, no. No? It's probably not. It's a husband and wife proposition, <laughs> uh, yeah. huh? All right, that's very cool. Yeah. So I was also looking at the entry to it. I was kind of studying how that works. And I see you got, there's a, I assume that's a grip handle to get yeah. up. Yep. And right put in the little uh, opening in the fuselage there, which is all like leather wrapped. Yeah. It's very, the detail's great. I love the detail. And then a step on the wing. Yep. And then the right leg inside the cockpit. Is that how it works? That's, or, that's... or reverse for the other side. We got the same oh, thing yeah, on right, the other right. side. So you got to be a left, a left footer or a right footer to yep. get in the airplane, yep. huh? Yep. <laughs> you need to be in pretty good shape. It's surprising uh, with these airplanes, the older the airplanes are, the more difficult. You can tell that they were really built for very young people. Yeah, back 20 year old. Kind of yeah, 20 year old just popping yeah. up there. Yeah, yeah you get a little just jump right in the thing. Yeah. I experimented a little bit and went, okay, I'm not going to embarrass myself here, but I know I can get in it. But yes, you're right. It's kind of a big step there and stuff. So, well, we've had practice, so we can both get in and out of it now. All right, we, we great. We get it pretty quick now. <laughs> cool. So, Sandy, you got the microphone again. I want to ask you a delicate question here between okay. husband and wife. All right. How did you divide the labor? Who did various parts? You can't both hold the same screwdriver at the same time, so well, there I, had I, to be some divisional labor. How'd you work that I out? I think part of the divisional labor was that I was the supervisor, <laughs> of and course. he did everything else. <laughs> Good job, Blake. <laughs> <laughs> no, we got into where we were picking out the colors, uh, you know, we, we made it exactly like the original was, so we picked out the colors, but I was the one that went and made sure that everything was an exact match. Uh, the wood, I'm, I'm very particular about making the wood match, the stains inside, the stain on the turtle deck, the uh, the cross hatching on the back of the uh, 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 seats and everything. You know, you want to make sure all that matches and looks very nice. Uh, made sure that everything was painted on the inside the way it's supposed to be painted. Uh, made sure the outside screws were painted properly, everything was uh, was done nicely but uh, and you know when you when you get to, to laying out the parts and the pieces and all that there's the organized side and then there's the guy side so I think I organized this and kept us fairly well organized throughout the entire process. So it really was a partnership to yeah, build was, the airplane and as I, well and, as to operate it and enjoy oh, yeah. it. Well and, and we shot a lot of rivets together he'd, he'd drill and I'd shoot and we'd just keep going from there we got thousands That's of great. rivets in this baby so yeah. Well, you're both still smiling, and you're not trying to stand <laughs> away right. from one another, so right. obviously it wasn't a divisive it thing, it was a joining it thing. Well, like I got to tell everybody, Blake's passion is flying, my passion is him, and it works out great. Well, I'm telling you, the inside, as I said at the beginning, the in, the cockpit is just an inviting atmosphere in oh, there. Thanks. I love the old, authentic instruments in it. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's, there's no digital screens in this airplane. And, and you notice all the brass bezels around yes, the instruments? Yes, yes, the brass bezels done. are mine, and the... Uh, all the leatherettes that are on here, those are all done the way they're supposed to be. I it's cut gorgeous. all those out myself, so yeah. All right, well, that's really great. Well, to find out more, not necessarily about your particular project, I've asked you most of the questions I can think of, but more about aerodrome airplanes and your success with Robert, that was great to hear. How do we find him and get more information well, about what he's got to offer? You just go on the website, that's real easy, Air, it's aerodrome airplanes. Dot com. And that's all right. you do. Go right there. It'll show you everything you need to know. Address, phone number, texting. Robert will do everything with you. Sounds great. Well, we appreciate your time today. Uh, airplanes of this kind and all sorts of affordable aviation in the light aircraft space. You can find lots of that on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining Blake and Sandy uh, Thomas here at the beautiful reproduction of this airplane here. Nice job. And the nice 100th job. anniversary of World War One. And the 100th Very good. Excellent. <laughs> Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs>